Feel better? Y'all feel better? All right, cool. That's what's up. All right. Right now, what we about to do, um, the next voice you're about to hear, one of my true homies, man, I love this dude. Uh, we came up in the program together on the national level. Uh, this is my homie, man, my brother from another. Make some noise. Give it up for Mr. James Mackey. You girl, you girl, you girl, you girl, you girl. Just so cool, look at him. He got his drink in his cup. He got his laptop. Do your thing, man. So I'm not gonna be at the podium because I don't feel like I need the podium, right? That's right. So my name is James Mack, and I'm a graduate of Youthville Columbus Community School of 2008. And uh, uh, Tasha, Natasha, who you just seen uh, on, on the video, actually graduated some, um, from the same school I graduated from. And I seen her transform to, that was just beautiful right there. I mean, you gotta give it up for her because I mean, only if you knew who she really was. Only if you knew who she really was. So, I was figuring out what I was going to start talking about, right? And I'm like, I don't know what. Should I start off like, should I start off by explaining, tell them what you're going to tell them, and tell them, and tell them what you told them? Y'all know about that finding your pitch. Y'all know what That's I'm talking right. about, right? That's right. But then I was like, nah, let me start off with something different, right? So I wanted to start off with something that 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 made me who I really was, who I am today, right? And so this graduation speech that I gave when I graduated was the most rememberable speech that I ever gave. And so I had to write a speech in my class, in my college class. It was a communications class, and they wanted me to give a speech about, you know, one of the, the most rememberable moments. And so I had to think, I'm like, what is it? And it was my graduation speech. So without further ado, let me go ahead and give you, this is not the speech, but this is what I wrote about that speech, all right? There was a young man who once told me that I care nothing for my life anymore. I care nothing because I have failed. I have failed my dreams of one day receiving my high school diploma. I have failed That's the camera. my dream of one day becoming an infamous motivational speaker. I have failed in the eyes of my family members. But most importantly, I failed. I have failed. I failed myself. Now, ironically, the same young man who goes by the name of Jay Mack, graduates. He graduates at the top of his class. The first graduate to receive valedictorian. For that, on this one day, he is who he is today. On this one day, he delivers an infamous speech, and on, his one, on this one day, he adapts to his audience very well. And on this one day, his family has a reason to be proud of him. The speech he delivered was the turning point of the graduation. He had practiced this speech so well that he did not once look down at his paper. He spoke clearly as water and loud, so loud that he refused to use the microphone. Because of this one day, he is who he is today. The audience, the audience was amazed by the way this young man delivered his speech. They made him feel important. 
They made him feel like he was someone famous. They made him feel like he was a motivational speaker. <laughs> because of this one day, he is who he is today. But his family, his family, the look on their faces, the tears coming from their eyes, because they were surprised. Because they were surprised and proud. Surprised and proud because in the past, this young man cared not to live anymore because he felt he had failed in life. But he did something. He graduated. And because of this one day, he is who he is today. And on this day, he does not go by the name of J. Mac anymore. Now, he goes by the name of Thank you. You good? You good? Thank you. So, so you have heard all of that, right? And so it was a journey that I went through in life, man. When I was younger, I always believed that, you know, I would be the one to transform this world around. This is at a young age. But my actions didn't say that at all. They didn't say that at all. I moved from Chicago when I was 10 years old. And I started going crazy. And what I, what, by me, what I, what I mean about going crazy, like I didn't care for anybody. I was a young dude, but I'm telling you, my mentality was surpassed the 10 years old that I knew. I'm telling you this straight up. I used to run around in school and fight people just because. And think about it, like, look, look at me now. Like, I'm short. Think how, how tall I was when I was 10 years old. When I was like three foot two or something like that. On everything. But I tell you what, I didn't care what nobody said, no one, no one thought about me, because I was the hardest dude around. Only 10 years old. So I grew older. I got kicked out of elementary school and all of that. You know what I mean? They passed me through and they passed me through my education. Go ahead, just get out of here. Fifth grade, you passed, all right, whatever. Sixth grade, whatever. So I went to high school. And so I'm in high school and I, I really never paid attention in class. Why? Because I ain't care too much about my education. I felt like people ain't care about me. So why should I care about what's going on in here, in this school? And so I went through high school like for four years straight, not caring too much about education. I was selling drugs, all that, all that. <laughs> and I got kicked out of every Columbus public school in Columbus, Ohio. That literally means I could not go to any public school in Columbus, Ohio. Why? Because of my actions. So I went to two other schools Right? Uh, alter, uh, alternative school that, you know what I mean, for, for the bad students or whatever. <laughs> they couldn't hold me down. I got kicked out of that school. I'm not lying. This is real talk. And I know y'all feel me. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yep. And so I was dealing with situations at home, and because of those situations that I was dealing at home, right, made me not even care about my education. I was more focused on what was going on in the streets. So when I turned 19 years old, 
I remember my little brother riding his bike at night, late, dude dressed in all black, right? And so I was, look, I was crazy, I was nuts, right? But I knew my little brother wasn't doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. Who you know riding on the bike in the all black with a bag? What they doing? <laughs> what they doing? So check this out. The next day, I come in home from work. No, the next day, the next night, I come in from wherever I was at, doing whatever I was doing. And I see my little brother knocked out, sleep. It's like 10, 11 o'clock. I'm like, man, okay, he all right. Excuse me. He all right. He just sleep. So I get up, go to work in the morning. You know what I mean? About to head home. So I head home. My mom like, man, James, I don't know where your little brother at, man. I ain't seen him all day. He took the van, and um, he just been going. He just been going all day. I'm like, man, he all right. Calm down. Because my mom, she always worried because we are loving our family, we love each other, you know what I mean? And so he was gone all day, so she was just worried. I'm like, my he all right? Literally, three minutes later, look, it's the U.S. Marshals. U.S. Marshals is at our house running through our crib because my brother had committed a robbery. And throughout that robbery, someone was shot five times in the back. And so it really didn't hit me. It really didn't hit me until the next day I seen my brother's face on the news was going to jail for robbery. And I was like, man, that's that's my little brother. I like, I, I just seen him yesterday. Now he in jail for robbery? I'm not done yet. I'm just beginning. So to make that long story short, I mean, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> he had to serve 10 years. This is when I was 19. So, he served 10 years. Well, not 10, I'm sorry. He served seven so far to this day. He served seven years. Right? So, a year later, things got even worse. Another younger brother, my youngest of all, was killed due to gang violence, shot in the head. I'll never forget that day. My sister came running down the stairs like, James, Pierce dead. Do you know what that felt like knowing that my little brother was dead? Like, get out of here. At first, I blew it off like, quit playing with me. Like, don't play with me like that. The next morning, I seen my little brother's picture on the news. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. 